Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we're going to look at a beautiful kit that was available at one time from Creature Creations, sculpted by Pat Delaney. This is a beautiful kit, as you can see, capturing Boris Karloff on a coffee break outside of his door and standing in a hallway with the picture of Frankenstein behind him from the movie. And he's just taking a coffee break and, as usual, cigarette in hand. And we're going to talk a little bit about this beautiful kit. I sure wish this was out there today. Creature Creations also did a Jack Pierce tribute, which I'm on the hunt for. So if you're watching this and you have one in your stash and you don't plan on building it, hit me up. Maybe we can make a deal. Well, let's take a look at this beautiful piece. It comes with two wall sections. A base, the Frankenstein figure, the uh, reproduction of the movie poster, and a plastic piece to put in the frame. There's so much detail on this. It also has the Boris Karloff nameplate that goes below the star on his dressing room door. And uh, the detail in this is really quite well. Uh, Pat Delaney really hit the likeness of Boris Karloff on this one. I recently talked with a fellow modeler about this and he said that he was really never excited about this kit. But after seeing this paint up, it's now on his radar. That's a compliment to me, but it, most of all it's a compliment to the sculpt. If you get a chance to pick one of these up or if you find one on eBay, do yourself a favor and grab it. Well, let's talk a little bit about what I've done in this one. As usual, I start with the base. That way, again, it dictates for me what I'm going to do with the figure, if you will. So basically, this whole thing was base coated in black. And again, if you go to Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Joann's, look for the Delta Cream Coat Black. It comes in a bottle about this big. Usually, you can get them for four or five bucks. It'll last forever. And there's something about that, painting that on with a regular wide flat brush. It gives you such a deep base coat. And that's again what I did with this. It was all painted on after it was primered with automotive gray primer. So once it was all painted black, this one I really struggled with wall colors, uh, floor colors. I, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So again, I just started spraying. That's the beauty. Spray the paint. If you don't like it, cover it back up. It's only paint, right? So for the floor, I pulled out my uh, rich brown, hit the floor with that, and then I came back in with the transparent black, toned it down. Then I came back in for the highlights on the floor with tie-in brown and kind of hit the center of each plank that's in the floor. Now if you find this kit, you'll have another option for the floor. It comes with a uh, wood flooring material that you could probably glue right on there. I chose not to use that and try to bring out the colors myself. So a combination of black, rich brown, tie-in brown, and of course transparent black. Again, my process is going back and forth with those colors until I get what I'm looking for. So once the floor was done, I decided just to go around the flooring, if you will, with just uh, black, leave it black. But I went a step further. This may sound odd to you, but I used, again, in the big bottles, it's called uh, metallic black. And I hand brushed metallic black all the way around. And you think, well, that's going to have a different look, a metallic look to it. True, if you were to leave it just as that. But once you dull coat it, it gives you a whole different finish. It really takes, to me, the metallic right out of the picture. And then gives you a different black 
and it really works well when you're working with a kit with all blacks because it gives you that minor hue difference in the black uh, colors. Give it a try. You might like it. So once I was done with that, I had to decide on what I'm to do with the walls itself. So basically I enlisted uh, a tan for that and I just started spraying uh, tan on it and I didn't like it. So I brought out uh, another color that I liked which was like a kiwi, which I guess is like a tan, real light, almost brownish. So I decided to hit all the walls with that. I liked what it was doing, so I uh, kept on spraying it. Then I came in with um, some transparent uh, raw umber and kind of sprayed it over it a little bit, toned it down a little bit to give it a, what you see here, a little bit of a darker look, but yet tan. And then I uh, come back in again with the uh, uh, original color and kept going back and forth with the uh, transparent raw umber and the base color until I got what I was looking for. So once I had that color, I had to decide what do I want to do for the wall panels below the door for Mr. Karloff. Uh, the top of this, I just went straight up metallic black. I came in below basically with um, uh, different types of colors. I actually came in with a reddish uh, color, but it's black. It, I believe it's called uh, black red and it's again from the Garage US Colors and I hit the whole walls with that and then I came over that with the uh, transparent black to kind of bring it down otherwise it was kind of too reddish but I wanted a paneling difference like you would see in a home and again the black gave you a nice uh, transition from the wall to the panel below and the reddish color was actually an idea of my Anne Marie I was struggling again with what I wanted to do after I got this wall color and she said well, I would go like kind of with like a mahogany look like a furniture. In my studio I have a mahogany cabinet that has my record player CD cassette unit on there that I jam to when I'm painting and I looked at that and I kind of went with similar colors but not as mahogany look if that makes sense and then I ended up with the color that you see here. So for me with the uh, tannish color to the reddish brown down to the brown the whole piece flows and that's uh, one of the things I think we need to remember when we're building and painting model kits it's it's the flow it's how the whole piece comes together and that comes with time and that comes with experimenting you don't want to have like a over-the-top wall floor and then stick Boris Karloff in the center where everything just your eye doesn't know where to go it goes to the bright to the dark to just messes it up. So for me, you want a whole flow from the base to the figure. And I believe I've got what I thought was that flow on that piece here. So for the uh, poster frame, if you will, uh, basically uh, got out pearl gold, again from the Garage US Colors, airbrush that on, started out light over the black, and then I just got a little bit closer and went a little bit heavier. And that's what you see here. Then, believe it or not, I took my transparent black and sprayed the whole areas to bring the gold down so it wasn't so stark. And then it looks kind of old, like it's maybe been in there. And you want to hit the, you know, the crevices with the black. You want to go inside a little bit more so there's some depth to it. Now for the door itself, I used that uh, black red went around the whole framing of the door so it kind of blends with the other woodwork you got going here and again toned it all down with the transparent black just straight up tie in brown for the door I just kept airbrushing the door closer back pulling the airbrush back getting closer just basically shooting the whole door and then of course I came back in with the transparent black and toned the whole piece down the star above his nameplate again was done with the pearl gold and then I brought it down with some black. I also actually experimented with this a little bit and I brought in some transparent raw umber and I also hit that there a little bit over there too. Gave it a nice kind of look, kind of like a dirty star look if you will. The nameplate itself was uh, done in the uh, metallic black and then the kit does come with a 
nameplates that already say Boris Karloff, like you see, and it basically I glued it to that. Um, then stuck the whole thing to the door, and that was done. Uh, the wall switch itself basically was the original uh, color of the tan, and I just then uh, brought some uh, raw umber over it, transparent, just to tone it down a little bit and give a little bit of a difference. So that basically was the base. Now on to the figure. Uh, Frankenstein can be done in so many different ways. You know, but I've seen stills and pictures from uh, Jack Pierce and his makeup. Always tends to go with that greenish gray. So again, I decided that's what I'm going to do with this one. So again, this whole piece, uh, the pants, the shoes, Frankenstein's face, his arms and hands, were all base coated again with the black hand brushed on. The skin itself, I left the automotive gray primer. That way I could build up the flushes. So for his face, basically, and his arms, I pulled out my trusty Badger Freak Flex Franken flush, and I began airbrushing it on. Again, you have to thin that paint down or it will clog. Believe me when I tell you, that may or may not have happened to me at one time. So I came in and basically just start hitting it lightly. You don't want to spray it overly, otherwise it's just going to give you a just a really bright green. Not real bright, but yet just too much for my liking. So I came in gently and started airbrushing all the areas. Came back in with the transparent black, started hitting all the cheek uh, bone area above the eyelids, his lips, on his hands, between the fingers, kind of toned that green down. And that was a process. I kept going back and forth with that until I got what I liked. The final step was coming back in with the Frankenflesh, hitting all the highlight areas, the brow, the nose, the top of the cheeks, the chin, the ears, uh, certain areas of the hands, until you get the look that you're looking for. It was, a, again, a process back with the transparent black, Frankenflesh, until I got what I wanted. Below his eyes, I uh, enlisted the transparent Mars Red, loaded up my uh, Badger Chrome, real nice detailed brush, come and blow his eyes, hit it with the Mars Red, and uh, got what I was looking for there. I kind of blended it into a little bit into the nose so it kind of blends in. Then, of course, I came in with um, the neutral gray for his eye color. Uh, again, the pupils were done with uh, the uh, cream Delta cream coat line. It was a dark brown, basically. And again, the dotting of the pupil with a real fine brush to give that pupil the final dot so it looks like an eye. Very small area to work. Frankenstein always wasn't one. Everything was his eyes were up and like above his head. Now the um, neck bolts themselves, this kit that I had, I looked and looked, did not have any kind of neck bolts. So I bought some carpet tack nails, snipped off the ends, drilled a hole on each side, stuck them in, some black paint, some silver, boom, there's the neck bolts. Now for his skin, again I pulled out my trusty uh, suntan flesh set from Reaper Master Series paints. You have the suntan flesh, suntan shadow, suntan highlights. Just started basically with the suntan flesh, airbrushed the whole piece, came in with the shadows for all the folds where his muscles, he was kind of undernourished when he took this roll on. So you hit all the lines for him. Kind of use that a little heavier where the green meets into the uh, flesh so it blends in. Then I came in with the highlight area and just hit the top of the pecs, a little bit on the top of the uh, biceps on his arms. And then again, the process begins again. It's back and forth until you get the color you're looking for. And then eventually what I did with the uh, skin itself is I took the shadow flesh, thinned it way down and just misted it, tie it all together. And that's basically what I did with the flesh tone. The key on the piece like this in a Janice Karloff Pierce tribute is the blending from the green to the flesh. And that to me was something I really concentrated on and I hope that it shows in this kit the work that was put into it. The coffee cup basically just hand painted some ivory white. Inside the cup I took that uh, brown and just kind of painted it, toned it down with some transparent black. 
The scars were done with the uh, sunburn red from the Freak Flex Badger line. And then some purples just around it with a pastel just to kind of give it a bruised look. The purple was used on the veining on its hand. The pastels just lightly brush it in. The cigarette that came with the kit, I just left it straight up white, took some sunburn red, hit the end of it to look like it's burning. The shoes on them, I used again the metallic black and just left it straight up black. Once you dull coat it, it gives you the look that you see. The pants was uh, done with tie in brown over black. Airbrushing it in, hitting some areas, the folds a little bit heavier. Back and forth with the transparent black and the folds of the pants. Bring it back down. Process again, going back and forth until your eye likes what you, it sees. And that's how I paint. When I look at it and go, ooh, that's it. Or you might know the feeling when you look at it and nothing's driving. Nothing's working. Walk away. Come back. It'll still be there. But for me, it's just back and forth until it's what my eye thinks is right. Now for his belt, uh, again I used the metallic black. As you can see it just gives it a whole different black look once you dull coat it. The buckle itself was just lightly uh, dry brushed with some silver. Same with the uh, pieces of uh, bolts or stuff that they use to keep his arm together, just lightly dry brushed with some silver. You have to be careful with silver if you dry brush it, it'll look like it's been dry brushed. It's Good to drive, send it through an airbrush, but man, does that stuff clog. So sometimes I go the cheap route and just dry brush it. If it gets too crazy, guess what? Transparent black, bring it down. So that's the kit, the beautiful kit. I've heard it called uh, Makeup Call. I've heard it called uh, Karloff Dressing Room. I'm going to call it Karloff Makeup Call from uh, Creature Creations. If you can find this kit, grab it. If you have the Pierce kit, let me know. So that's the kit. I thank you for watching Talking Models with Troy Nairt. I'll put some info on there if you want to contact me. And again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe today. It does make a difference. And I hope your day is filled with God's blessings. Have a great day and God bless.